Hi. Charm guy. This is the charm yeah. hour. Ain't it though? Oh man, I keep dropping this Elijah Craig on myself. You know what? Three uh he suggested that I be drinking at this episode. It's gonna be pretty quick too. In order to get this going though, I gotta put the shades on. Yeah. It's gonna get kinda shady. This is the shade hour. Definitely the charm hour, but it's gonna get kinda shady. I'm inspired today. I'm inspired today to talk about your fascination. And when I say your, I mean me too, with celebrities and how ill it can be. I think celebrities are also doing wild shit and saying wild shit. And we'll get to that. First, I want to go here. Back to Kevin. I got to say it. I've heard some very vile things about Kevin Samuels. We've praised this man's death. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? When was the last time you were happy about someone dying? When was the last time you were happy about somebody dying? I mean, all the shit that I heard about this man, Karma, Vivica Fox. Hey, shout out to Corey Holcomb for saying what we all really want to say about Vivica, who's single, has no kids, and you're old. Who's trying to fuck you still? Why are you even caring about what this man was talking about? Here's the thing. Again, Kevin had a great conversation. He started a conversation that we needed to have. I really am starting to wonder if black people can be saved. I don't even know if you could be saved. You had someone took the time out of his life. He could be doing other shit. Hey, he had a fine chick he was fucking, 32. He's a 56-year-old, nice-looking guy. You know, I'm a heterosexual man. I'm comfortable in my sexuality. I can say that. He's a nice-looking guy, tall guy. got any woman he wanted. He didn't have to take his time out of his precious life to talk to you and your fucking attitude and your pro- you're, you're just negative, bro. That, that was just fucking ridiculous the way we just went at this man. And I'm saying we because we're all just in this circus, right? We're all participating in social media. And it's not just social media. I hate when you say that. It's just social media. And you're saying that shit while you're on social media. You're terrible. We can't just get so fucking desensitized that we start being ignorant. And that's what we're doing. We're practicing a lot of ignorance. I would never be happy. Were you happy when Osama bin Laden got killed? I didn't hear. Well, you know what? That was a long time ago. But no, social media was out. Was you niggas parading around saying that? Are you happy when criminals get taken away? No, you're not. You're not happy when criminals get taken away. You actually praise that shit. You like to see people in mayhem. You love that. You love to see people in mayhem. These rappers are talking about terrible shit. And you're defending them. I don't really know the situation with you know who. I don't really like talking about rappers because I'm a rapper. I don't like talking about rappers. I believe in art. Art does, you know, tragically sometimes and sometimes fortunately imitate life. I think it's really bad, however, that we're in a generation where so many artists are going to prison going to jail for shit they're really doing. I'm from a time where the studio gangster exists. Let's get that back. I want the fake nigga. I like listening to the fake nigga because I can get another record. I can get so many records out of him because he going to be talking about the bullshit I want to hear and he's not going to jail for it because he's fake. Be lame again. Make being square cool. You could go home at night, take care of your families. Not really acting it out. Also, let me say this. It's a rant, guys. You got to stick with me. It's going to move kind of fast. It's a lightning round. Freedom of speech is what I'm practicing now. I'm and Kevin Samuels having our opinion. We look at the world. We say what we want to say. And you can either like it or not like it. It happens in politics all the time. I'm not inciting violence. I'm not talking about violent things that I've done. And trust me, there are things I'm taking to my grave. I'm not telling nobody. It's just what it is. I think that's how it should be. You know what? Make the G code great again. Stop telling on yourselves. And you, you like the celebrity. You hate Kevin Samuels uh, because he's a celebrity. You love the negative people because they're celebrities. You just, you're just infatuated with celebrity. You're on your fucking phone talking shit because you think you're a celebrity. 
I think I'm a celebrity too. That's why I say you. You is me as well. I'm talking to us. Sorry, I had to get this whiskey in my system. I'm going to also fire this good green up. You know, sometimes when you're just on this shit, these timelines over and over again, you're just watching it through the day. You just, it, it, it will make you feel this way. I just, I just can't, I don't understand how you guys don't see it. Kevin Samuels, I don't think he has a police record. Three, he's got a police record. You know, Don, I, dude, does, does, does Kevin Samuels have a police record? I don't think he has a police record at all. Um, I don't think he's ever disrespected women, like calling them the B word. Hey, that's another thing. You hate Kevin, but you're going to dance to a nigga calling you a bitch and a hoe and a, giving you a throat, baby. Y'all are weird strangely weird i'm done with that i need to get away from that i just had to get that out i do however want to visit the rap thing again rap is just yo we're in a place where hip-hop is just statistically if you guys don't know this you do know that this is the number one streaming genre in the world is the number one streaming genre. If you go on Apple, Spotify, look look at the numbers. I mean, Drake, he's an hip hop artist. He's like the it was him and NBA young boy. So hip hop has a major influence. I want you to think about this. When you're making this music to these great beats and you're putting these words on it, if people are listening to it, that shit getting in your spirit. These motherfuckers talking about killing people for real. As we see, there is some you know, evidence to suggest that this is actually happening in their music. This is not a great thing. Um, it's actually pretty fucking terrible. And I think for the younger generation, they feel that they must act it out. They don't even care about going to prison, man. Pulling the toolie out and stepping is something that they really are okay with doing because this is just a part of the culture now. Hip hop is not the hip hop we grew up on, meaning that it is not the genre that is in the back room or it's in the closet tucked away. That's not it. This is something that's in your face. Hey, bro, for the first time, I'm a 37-year-old guy. I'm a father with my kids. We're listening to the same shit. I'm listening to what they're listening to. That's huge. We're covering a broad spectrum of listeners, um, which makes it dangerous. Because now look at what we have happening. I mean, look at all these cases with rappers that are just getting into trouble. It's like times 10. I remember when Pac got in trouble. It was like, oh, Pac, Tupac, everybody's looking at Tupac. It's Tupac. Because Tupac was a mega star. You got to understand, for those that don't know and wasn't alive at the time, Tupac was a mega star. This was just ridiculous. But he was like the guy, the rebel. That's who we looked at. There are several Pacs now. You want to know something? You want to know the funny thing? I'm a Pac fan. And all my Pac fans may get mad at me about this. Because really, to be honest, in my core, even though Jay-Z is number one for me and Drake is coming there, that's just the artist in me. If I'm being quite honest, Tupac was my first favorite rapper. I have a big painting of Tupac in my, in my home that I see every day. I just draw this energy from Tupac. I love the revolutionary in him. I feel like that's me. He's an air sign. I'm an air sign. Kanye, we're air signs, you know, very rebellious, right? But now as an adult and I look back, I do see the error in his ways. He wasn't a gang member. He was not a real gang member. He wasn't from LA. He left the East Coast and went to the Bay. Y'all know the story. But why was he perpetuating or allowed to perpetuate a culture that he wasn't really even a part of? I think the young folks would say he's Cap. Oh, Tupac is Cap. Yeah. Hey, Pac, P-A-C, if you run that backwards, that's Cap. That's kind of weird, right? That's what he was doing. That's what he was doing. He was capping. He's too cap. I, 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 I love Tupac, and I don't want the OGs, all the people that's going to cry for Pac, but we have to have a point where we care about humanity, and we care about our culture, and we have to talk about the things that destroyed us. That became popular. As an artist, he was awesome. As a person, that wasn't him. But now, you have several Pacs. And several Pacs, meaning people who are entering into 
continuous criminal behavior, going to jail, being in trouble, you get it. And the difference between them and Pac, sadly, is that they're actually doing it. And they're from these neighborhoods they say they're from. And they're a part of some real wild shit. I remember when I really got into like drill music and understanding drill music because I didn't understand it. I was really sad and I went down like this click hole on YouTube and was just like researching drill and where it came from. It was really depressing and it had a major influence on society. I really want to wrap this up, man. I didn't want to be too long. I don't know if I should. Because I think this is getting pretty good. I want to spend a little more time on watch what you say, even though you have freedom of speech. And watch what you're telling people and who you're influencing. Because we also have responsibility. We have a responsibility to the people who are listening to us. We have a responsibility to ourselves. Listen, I'm going get, to get right to it, Okay. The Young Thug Gunner situation is very disheartening. It's very disheartening. Young Thug is somebody who's very big and meaningful to our culture. Um, Gunner's becoming that way. And so many of the Atlanta artists, it's a big deal, right? Um, it's very disheartening to see these guys in the situation that they're in. But the truth is, what do we support in our music? And what are we supporting in our personal lives? It's always going to come back and get you. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, you're not bigger than the program. You're not bigger than the program. It's going to come get you. You get, you reap what you sow. Uh, this is just fascinating. We're living in a fascinating time. Where we're watching people that we really look up to or some of us aspire to be. We're watching your flaws like second by second by second by second. And you're talking about it, which is cool. But are you learning from it? Are you becoming better from it? I mean, you got to understand they're talking about killing motherfuckers all day. This is in your system all the time. And then when the DA or the cops are investigating you and, and the lyrics match, now everybody wants to run away from, oh, uh, it's just freedom of speech. Come on, man, stop. That's not the case here. They're telling on themselves, one, and they are reinforcing what people even think about black people because they think we niggas and they think we do ghetto shit and just evil shit. That, that they're reinforcing this. We have a strong disconnect here. Seriously, and we need to come back. We need to come back. Hey, I think I heard someone say this. I don't know if it was on, I don't know what podcast it was on, but I'll just, I'll just say it like this. I don't expect Arnold Schwarzenegger to come out of Terminator and blow somebody's fucking head off in real life. I just don't. I understand it's fake and it's entertainment, and we need to look at hip-hop in the same manner. We have to separate the people from the work. I mean, we've seen countless artists go down. I mean, you've seen Bill Cosby. Hey, look, man, do you know how fucking important the Cosby show was in the fucking different world? There's a whole generation of people went to college because of that. That man's a rapist. He just is. He was he was drugging hoes and fucking them. Now, did he do it all? Did he do, you know, it to everybody? I don't know. Excuse my language. That's how I talk. Get over it. My heart's in the right place. Fuck you if you don't like it. He was raping women. That's disgusting. He deserves what comes becomes of him. O.J. Simpson, Hall of Famer. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a fucking Hall of Fame running back who influenced so many other black kids to want to be running backs. Man, he's he, he probably did that shit. You know what I'm talking about. He's a little shaky. A lot of these guys are a little shaky, and you have to understand, stop putting the fucking, just respect the message. And get better from that. You have to separate the man from that. You have to separate the people from that. Which brings me to something else. But this is really important to me. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this Megan Thee Stallion thing. In fact, I don't have a lot of time to talk about it. I got to save it. Because <laughs> I can't have this discussion without a woman. I don't like the fact that that became a protect black woman issue 